preciseness and the trustworthiness in which the uh, narrators would transmit the information. So anyway, this person was given uh, a pregnant she-camel and uh, in Arabic it says naqatan ushara al ushara what this means is that this is a pregnant uh, she she camel uh, for which it's like a, it's like ushara is basically a pregnant uh, pregnant woman or pregnant whatever who's 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 eight months due not eight months and <coughs> or which is eight months pregnant and so Allah mentions in, in an ayat in fact what is ishara uttilat وَإِذَا الْعِشَارُ أُطِّلَتْ mentions the word uh, ishar and this refers to uh, the, the, the day of judgment when everyone will be will totally forget themselves and they will abandon the, themselves and their wealth and whatever and what will happen is that the pregnant one pregnant she camel will give birth to its uh, it, you know its, 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 its load due to the severe of the terror on that day and then after this, after the angel gave to this uh, leper, he then said, Barakallahu laka fiha, may Allah bless you therein. So he called upon this person for barakah. And we know that the bar- we know that the angel that the supplication of the angel is is answered to, and this is by the command of Allah. And so this happened in order to test and put this person to trial. Then he came to the um, uh, bald man as we've seen, and and then finally he came to the blind man as we've also seen in the hadith. And so what happened, uh, as the Sheikh explains, that as a result of uh, the, the, you know, the, 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 individual, the individual animals that were given to each one, like the pregnant she camel or the pregnant cow or the two um, sheep that were given to the, to, the, to, the, to the blind man, that as a result of all of these, uh, they all increased in number and so one person had a great deal of camels, another one had a great deal of cows, another one had a great deal of sheep. And all of this is was a trial and a test upon them from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the same angel, he came back uh, in the same way to each of these people in the manner that they themselves found themselves in, in, in first. And so he said whatever he said, that I'm a poor man and so on and so forth and whatever. And we find that um, what, what in essence happened as the Sheikh explains that each of these people are the first two people that they rejected the favor of Allah upon them. Right? By, by refusing to give to this angel and by saying what they said, they rejected the previous state that they were in, the, the, the position of where they had this you know, disease or illness, and then they started making excuses and claiming that their wealth that they had was, from other, was, for, was for a reason other than the true and real reason, which was a favor from Allah. So they said, oh, it's something that I've just inherited from, you know, it's not like new wealth which I've just acquired, rather, it's, it's wealth that I've had from, from old, from my parents and you know, from, from them, from, from before them and so on and so forth. And this, as the, as the Sheikh says, is a rejection of the favor of Allah. So it, what happened was that the angel called, supplicated against both of these people, against the leper and the, and, 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 and the bald man, and he said that if, if, you, know, if, if, if you are liars, if you, if, if you are lying, then may Allah change you back to what you initially were. Same thing with, with, with the bald man, and the bald man said exactly the same thing that, you know, I've got many obligations and I can't afford to give you whatever. And then the same thing happened. And then finally he came to the blind man, and the blind man, obviously he acknowledged his previous situation, and, you know, he said, For wallahi la ajhaduka, that verily I will not prevent from you anything, you know, anything that you take, um, you know, because it's, it's, it's not anything that begins. It's not anything, anything that belongs to me, but rather it's from Allah. It's from Allah. It's, 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 it's the wealth of Allah. So then, this whole test that took place, the results were clear in the sense that the two men, the first two men, uh, had rejected the, 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 the favor of Allah uh, because they rejected the, the favor of Allah and Allah was angry with them too, with them both. But Allah was pleased with this blind man because he was grateful for the favor of Allah. So, the Sheikh says that this was the result of the test and the trial, and the Sheikh says that this is uh, this this uh, what, what's covered in this chapter here. That this is general for every person who disbelieves or rejects the favor of Allah, or who is grateful for the favor of Allah. Meaning that Allah is either pleased with one, or He is angered with with, 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 with one, depending on which state a person falls into. 
And then the Shaykh finishes by saying that these two verses that were mentioned uh, in this chapter, and likewise the one hadith that was mentioned, they have some uh, great affairs or great uh, points that we should uh, note. First of them is that to ascribe all of the favors to Allah is Tawheed. To refer every single favor back to Allah, that itself is Tawheed. And to ascribe them to other than Allah is Shirk. To ascribe them to other than Allah is Shirk. Now, if this person was to believe that, a per- that someone else besides Allah was the originator of these favors, then that is major Shirk. Major Shirk. Right? That's major Shirk. If someone else is the originator of these favors. But if he believes that Allah is the one who is the originator, he's the one who obviously brought these favors into existence, but that the sabab, that the cause and the reason behind them was other than Allah, then this is minor shirk. This is minor shirk. Right? So he ascribes them to something else. Rather than from, from Allah, he ascribes them to something else. Like for example, as we've said, some knowledge that he has, or due to a position uh, or status he has within the society, or because of his hard work and his effort and his striving, and that's why he would, you know, these are the reasons. So the Sheikh, Sheikh says that it's not permissible for us to ascribe anything to the asbab. Rather, all of it comes from Allah. So for example, we don't say that the farmer was, was successful in, in, in his harvest, harvesting the crop because he worked so hard and he tilled the land so well and he did everything you know, in accordance with his expert knowledge as to how he should till the land and so forth. Because now we are ascribing the results to the asbab, to the ways and means. These are just the ways and means. The actual originator is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? It's, <coughs> it's like the example that we often give, like when you have a headache and you take a tablet, a headache tablet, you don't say that the headache was cured as a result of this uh, tablet. The, the curer was Allah. The tablet was just a ways and means. It was just from the asbab. Just from the asbab. Allah is the one who gave or who placed in that tablet that chemical or that, that thing that had the certain, the, you know, the, the, the particular properties that allowed it to have the effect that it did have. Right? So the, the originator is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the one who removed your headache and your illness. The tablet or the medicine or tablet was just a means. So, in other words, that we don't ascribe the, uh, these things, the favors, to the asbab. We ascribe them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, so therefore, as the Shaykh continues and says that all of the blessings and favors are ascribed to Allah. And that's why in, uh, in another chapter, actually in Kitab al Tawheed, Shaykh Musa Muhammad bin Duhab has another chapter uh, discussing the verse, فَلَا تَجْعَلُوا لِلَّهِ أَنْدَادًا وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ Meaning, don't set up rivals with Allah whilst you have knowledge. And this refers to, for example, when a man says, you know, if it hadn't been for this guard dog, the thief would not have come. Right? If it hadn't been for this, you know, this, um, you know, this, this bird or this duck or whatever in the house, then the, the thief would have came in. That meaning, he's ascribing something for a reason other than it, it being a favor of Allah. So therefore, it's not, like to, it's, not, it's not permissible to ascribe these affairs to other than Allah. Second thing is that favors, favors and hardships are a test and a trial from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So you're tried both by favors and you're tried both by hardships. Like in the example that, that was given in, these, uh, in this hadith of the three men, they were put to trial with hardship and then they were put to trial with a favor and a blessing. Right? So mankind is put, put to trial by both. In the case of hardships is to see if he is patient. In the, in, 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 in the case of favors is to see if he is grateful. Right? So a, a human, a, a mankind is tested by both affairs. <coughs> so obviously a person needs to be grateful for the favors of Allah and needs to have patience upon the hardships he faces. Third benefit is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the angels ability in order to take whatever form or you know, to, to, to take on different forms. And this is established in many hadith. Um, you know, so you know, their form or their shape uh, the, the coming is is here, is here 
in order to, for 